All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Deplap, and uh, I'm going to be the moderator for today's session. And uh, we have, I think, uh, people are still joining, but uh, let me real quickly take you through a quick uh, guidebook of, of live meeting. So just make sure that you have live meeting Windows client installed to join the live meeting session. In that way, you will have audio. I just sent out an update to all the attendees. Uh, make sure that uh, you keep your feedback option to uh, green. If you have any questions or any issues, you can change it to red, and we shall uh, reach out to you for further assistance. If you have any questions, feel free to use the question and answer panel. Uh, that's the most relevant option. Um, you can just post your question and wait for the presenter to come back and answer your question. And uh, if you have follow-up question, you can just append in that same question. Uh, we have an audio poll, so we request you to give us a feedback if you can hear the audio. Um, otherwise, uh, if, if you have any issues, just change it to uh, red, and uh, we will reach out to you, the feedback option. And at the end of the session, we will also ask you for your feedback. Uh, not to live meeting, but you will receive a survey uh, mailer, so make sure that you fill in the survey, and that's going to help us in, plan, uh, in planning the future sessions. So that's pretty much about the logistics about this session. So once again, my name is Bitlab, and I'm, I'm the moderator for this session. And uh, today we have uh, our presenter, Kartik, with us. I think he is on call with us. Yeah, so um, we'll just hand over the... Uh, session to him in a few minutes. Before that, we just want to take you through a real quick audio test. So just let us know if you can hear me. Um, session is broadcasting audio over internet, so you must have a speaker or headset to hear the audio. So if you have the audio, just select yes so that uh, we have a visibility if you can hear me. All right, we just got two responses to now. Okay. All right, so we were just doing a real quick um, audio test to make sure that you all have audio working. If you can hear me, just uh, do a real quick, uh, just respond to this poll so that we have a visibility of audio. Uh, the plug got taken. I got it. All right. So we have our presenter on call with us. So let me just uh, put up his slide on the live meeting. All right. So today's presenter, as you might have read already in the website, uh, that's Scott Ken, and uh, he is one of the MVPs in South Asia region. Uh, he specializes on ASP.NET, IS, but he also works on various other technologies, including Windows Phone, uh, Windows Apps, and other things. So uh, he is going to be taking care of the rest of the delivery. And if you have any questions, use the question answer panel, use the feedback option. So let me hand over the session to Kartik so that uh, he can take you further. Kartik, over to you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Mr. Um, so thanks all for joining the session. Um, I hope uh, everyone is able to hear me properly. So if there is any issue, you can just uh, directly uh, put on the question the Q&A session. <coughs> or uh, you can just uh, get in touch with the particular moment so that we can rectify that and we can also So today's session is um, creating a cross-platform apps with uh, portable class libraries. So, So, 
even uh, government they also use the um, official that is a portable class library. They have they are free provided to support the uh, with the test thing 10 to 15 years before. <coughs> So, when it comes to cross platform applications, basically uh, when we need to use and when we not, uh, I mean, closely with the, with the set on uh, creating a cross platform application. Basically, when we have the low performance application um, that uh, the targets uh, in uh, different, um, uh, in, you know, different platforms, different trainers, then we can go with the cross platform. When it's a highly performed application, then definitely we should uh, not go with the cross platform application because of the uh, highly performed application make use of an APU feature um, compared to the low performance application. So basically then uh, we develop some app which exactly replicates the web application or the uh, web interface on your mobile. Then definitely we can make use of a cross platform application because it's going to be lightweight and uh, we can definitely uh, use it across the different uh, platforms pretty easily. But whereas uh, um, when we use the uh, more native features like the OS integrated uh, uh, the API calls uh, or the device specific API calls and uh, all these native con controls or native uh, uh, the framework um, APIs, then specific, I mean, then uh, we're not recommend to go with the cross platform application. This way we will uh, have a bit difficulty over having a separate code base but we can be every uh, framework level. So definitely not going to rectify the usage of the platform application development. And then uh, we have a RESTful application which uh, goes over the rest and uh, gets over the data, then we can go with the cost of application because all the major platforms, major um, uh, mobile platforms accept the RESTful um, interaction between the server and the client. And, uh, then it is time and cost which is very critical when you want to develop the application in no time and uh, with the limited uh, resources then going with cost of some applications with this choice. Okay. So what about class library? So this is something new which uh, we uh, when we keep on hearing the last uh, few months. Uh, so basically it was introduced officially with Mar issues to 2012. Now we can see that uh, this is a simple library that runs on multiple platforms. And so something like a code reference, a code library that we can use it across the multiple platforms to um, commonly we can uh, put the code onto the particular library and use it across the multiple platforms. That is a single code base for multiple targeted platforms. So this way we avoid multiple copies of the same code. So say for say we have a multiple uh, um, copies in different uh, platforms like. Uh, Android or the um, uh, web development or uh, also Windows Phone, Windows 8 uh, specifically with XAML coding. So this way we avoid the multiple copies and have it in a single repository. So it will be then there is a frequent change, uh, frequent updates. So basically we try to avoid the uh, touching the report base in all the places. Instead we just change it onto a particular place and make use of the library across the different platforms. Um, so this can also select the we can also this we can also select the target framework out of the box. So there are different uh, frameworks um, from we can definitely use it across. So we can target the framework which exactly we want. Say our application uh, wants to have a, uh, the I mean, uh, the library the class library specifically for Windows Phone and Windows 8. We can definitely uh, target the framework and uh, make use of the features I mean uh, APIs that have been available with that uh, particular. Uh, framework. Or if you want to target the uh, single light or WPF um, app, um, and then we can also target a particular framework and make use of the APIs that have been available with this the total class like this. So in this this part, uh, I mean, uh, this way I just mentioned like uh, the total class library is involved the question why not the APIs are available. So that is where, uh, because nowadays everything is on the APA, APA. basically the APA is a major role in the uh, enterprise application development, uh, but uh, using the APA is, uh, I mean, basically there are few reasons why APA is not portable, because the APA itself is not uh, an implemented solution by all the platforms. So traditionally in uh, top uh, framework like uh, uh, the system that I use, I mean, I use file or I use directory, or uh, that basically uh, falls into the uh, framework level, uh, I mean, the core framework level, the uh, uh, API format. 
So those things are not already implemented by all the platforms. So and it's also not compatible between the different platforms. So that is one of the reasons the APIs are not uh, uh, mainly considered as more portable uh, format. Apart from that, we can directly make use of this uh, portable class library as one of the solutions for this. So the portable, portable class library project supports with I mean, uh, as of now, the four uh, subset of assemblies, uh, basically with um, uh, the Windows and Windows 8, as we already mentioned, another thing on the Microsoft Super Lite as well as the Microsoft uh, platform. So right now, support uh, these four, uh, in, uh, I mean, uh, the subset of assemblies, basically Microsoft is trying to expand this in uh, most possible options so that uh, it will be highly uh, used across the different platforms. As I mentioned, so these are the, um, uh, the target chain form and chain box, I mean, uh, platform that I've been using, Docker chain box, uh, um, the portable class is available with Docker chain box 4 and the higher versions of that, so right now with Docker chain box 4.5, and then Symbolite, it's with Symbolite 4 and higher, the latest version is Symbolite 5, and in Windows Phone, uh, it's from the base of Windows Phone 7, 7.5 and also Windows 8. So not just uh, for the Windows Store app, so we have the full version that has been available, so it's really directly available with the uh, Windows Store app development. And uh, next box, uh, there is a support with minimum, very minimal uh, APIs that have been supported, which I'll uh, show the next slide. So this is, uh, this is how the, um, uh, I mean, the portable class library basically work out. Uh, so we are a single uh, code file for all the reusable classes, which will talk to the common uh, PCL, that is the PCL library. With that, we'll be, uh, the PCL library will act as a single uh, library uh, file for the different uh, uh, the platforms like Silver Light, Windows, Phone, or Web. So wherever we have the um, uh, feasible option, we can uh, definitely reference this library and use it across the different uh, platforms. That's why we can, we can take the uh, common code that has been shared across the multiple dotnet environments. So when 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 I use the uh, my portable class library because for the different uh, environments uh, like I mentioned on Silver Light, Windows Phone, Metro App Development or uh, Xbox and uh, Water Table, there are a few of the features that have been available and few that are not available with the, each of the um, uh, in, uh, the mix table that have been available right now with the PCN. So these are the these are the small matrix uh, that we can see. So what are the base features like the uh, so WCF, so the networking, uh, link, uh, serialization, JSON serialization, so the serialization that has been available across the different uh, environments. So when we target a particular environment, like uh, we are targeting applications with Windows Phone as well as on Windows 10 app, so we need to know what are the base features that have been available that can be used across uh, the PCL so that our uh, library will be shared across these two platforms. So we, we basically we can uh, have this matrix as a single place where we see it and uh, use the features that have been available to the different uh, platforms. Okay, so, so this is where the, um, uh, I mean, when we start using the portable class library, so we have a single source, single project, and uh, we'll have a single binary. So for a single binary, we can uh, reference it to multiple platforms. So in this with Visual Studio 2012, we have, the, we have the capability to add the portable class library where we can target the framework. As you mentioned, we can target the framework based on our requirements. So there are, there are the beautiful checkboxes at the left side where we'll uh, just remove what are the uh, frameworks we don't want and exactly what we require. So if you, if you require the Windows Phone as well as the dot net uh, for a Windows Store app, we can uh, select the two options and uh, uncheck the remaining options. So that's how the portable class reviews work on and uh, for the new, what is the Windows Phone 8 basically. So 
de mulher lá por um dos senhores da da tem target de dois pontos para um ponto ou para outro dois pontos e tanto o que tem que estar dentro da dentro do que tem que estar dentro do limite daí aí que for for um dos pontos então já não tem previsto que tem que ter as vinhas agora vai tudo já não dá beijão não há requerimento já não dá então se tu não é já não dá para apon é que se não já não está mais cheio não faz o apelo de dois pontos and with this PCL on uh, Windows Phone, we can uh, definitely just do a better architecture on uh, having a different application layers, layer, uh, application layers in the peers, so that uh, we'll use this PCL on Windows Phone as well as on Windows 8 effectively. And we have separate emulators and devices with deployments, particularly for the map we developed. So if you have an um, application developed for uh, uh, for I mean, uh, I can be ran or to typically be ran. We can uh, deploy that on the on the particular app and later on that. This is the performance of the app. This <coughs> is uh, the performance of the app performing. And we have the Windows Phone marketplace where we will uh, we need to register uh, in the basic developer registration need to be done. With that, uh, we can uh, just deploy the application to the marketplace and uh, make make it available to the public uh, just to download. There are a few things on uh, when we deploy the application onto the marketplace, like uh, uh, we need to put, I mean, uh, follow some um, steps where we we'll deploy it. Or, I mean, and basically, we need to provide some uh, um, I mean, description about the app and the uh, category basically goes about and different other steps. So the same way for. Uh, uh, the Windows we tap for uh, development as well. We have a couple of steps where uh, we need to follow to the main uh, enterprise application to the Windows to the market. So, um, I mean, the Windows 8 um, the modern app development basically targets the Windows 8 operating system. So, right now uh, we have Windows 8.1 in preview stage, it's not been available for the public. Um, so even for app developers, Windows 8 we have a separate issue to take it available and basically for the developers as well where um, I mean uh, uh, HTML JavaScript based um, application as well um, can be developed on uh, I mean for Windows 8. We have the different application names and tires where we can uh, definitely use the PCL and pop operator. Um, even we are, I mean, with the Windows 8 app development, we have a separate emulators and device specific departments uh, that will be available. And the Windows Store Marketplace is the one where we need to deploy the final application. There are few certain steps, uh, certain certification procedures that will be followed. Um, I mean, basically, the uh, different um, uh, steps to check the application quality. Then it will be uploaded to the marketplace. So, all this mobile and the modern development, uh, modern app development comes together with the PCL. So basically with the PCL architecture we can have the common code that has been used between the Windows, I mean Windows phone as well as the Windows 8 app development. So we have from the client, uh, so we separate the particular code base onto the uh, class library. With the class library we contact the server and get the um, uh, data which has been passed on, passed on back to the client. So this is from the enterprise level we can uh, do this but from a uh, uh, consumer level, we can have a separate uh, I mean, local data, not exactly getting over to the server and getting back the data. So if it is on the client server basis, we can have a separate protocol, basically HTTP protocol, can uh, make use of the API controller to contact the server and get back the information and show it on to the, uh, the, the respective client, the Windows 8, uh, um, I mean the modern app module or on the Windows 8 app, based on the different uh, UI. Um, which we have. So basically, uh, at this point, I, uh, I mean, we can say that uh, everything, I mean, everything that has been common between the two different uh, platforms that can be put onto the PCL, but whereas only one thing that will not be uh, definitely used, uh, or definitely we can um, avoid using onto the PCL is the UI. Because the UI, the XAML is going to be completely different based on the client. So definitely the XAML, uh, the UI is going to be a uh, separate um, code base for the different clients. Only the core business or the core uh, data data logic that will be used across the different uh, platform that can be used in as a separate class library. Um, Karthik, if you can speak a little louder because uh, there are a few people who are saying that you are not audible. So. Okay. Sure. Sure. Uh, 
I think there is some issue with this uh, so let me take it. I think I am uh, audible now. Yeah, a little better. So, the next one is the mobile app for, with the Xamarin. Then, uh, to give a brief idea about Xamarin, Xamarin is a own platform, I can say, but uh, in previous it was called Monotroid and uh, uh, it is, uh, we can develop an application for iOS as well as on uh, Android with C sharp and also B Hello. Hello. Oh, sorry, there is something to them. Um, okay. So, with uh, the PCL that has been provided by Microsoft, uh, we have the limitation of developing applications for Windows Phone 8, Windows 8, Dr. Framework, uh, or the Silverlight and uh, Xbox. So, if we target the application development, the cross application development for iOS as well as on Android, then the Xamarin is a beautiful product that has been available in the market. Uh, there we can use it uh, to develop the iOS as well as Android apps with C Sharp as a base code. So, as I already mentioned, with this uh, we can also we can also use Xamarin to have, I mean uh, develop apps for Windows 8, Windows 4, other other different platforms. There are around eight to nine uh, environment that have been really supported by Xamarin right now. So with this product, we can have a single port base, the same like PCN. We have a single port base, yeah. we have port base here. Um, but we, uh, we can use it across to a different demo uh, okay. There is some problem there. Uh, there is a little uh, echo. Can I try again? Try again. Is this fine? Try now. Okay. Okay. Oh, just go ahead. Just go ahead. I think we're going to speak. Okay. Here's Vipra. Yeah, go ahead. I think it goes on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, as I already mentioned, when we um, start developing application accounts or some applications, this uh, Xamarin. So, initially, this PCL, as I already mentioned, uh, we have this Windows Phone as well as Windows 8 that development uh, that can be readily done using the Visual Studio 2012 or the latest one um, which has been in the preview. But with Xamarin, they have a separate uh, Xamarin Studio and also support to uh, in, uh, have the template on Visual Studio as well. So with the Visual Studio template, we can develop the Android as well as the iOS app from the Visual Studio or use the Xamarin Studio, which is free of course, where uh, we can download the Xamarin and start developing the application for the cross platform. So right now, the major um, uh, platform for the mobile environment like uh, Windows Phone, iOS, Android, the top three, um, I mean, the platform uh, that can be really that can be really developed with the, the Xamarin. So for the uh, iOS, Xamarin uh, they term as mono touch for iOS, and for Android they do I mean term as mono for Android. So we will specifically when we want to develop application for uh, iOS and Android. Or if you are going to target one with Windows and with Windows Phone and Windows 8, then we can use the Xbox PCM, which is also powerful like uh, the Xamarin. Okay. 
So the cost platform um, application development is uh, something from what I can say tightly coupled with the model view model pattern. So basically, the model which holds the data of the business logic and uh, uh, I mean uh, the base model that has been available that based on the requirement we can fit onto the model. Whereas the view model, we can have uh, I mean the information that we want to display or uh, which basically acts on um, the view that we explain that we'll be uh, writing on this banner. Then the view model will speak with the view so that the view knows which view model we changed with the basically from the code perspective we have the high notify property change where we'll uh, we'll be touching in the code section where I'll show you the more. So it basically the view data binds the view model and the view model will from the model. So we can say that uh, the view which is basically on to the platform we need to keep it aside where we'll have a different view for the different platform. Whereas the view model and the model that has been tightly coupled, we can have it on the portable class library so that the, if there will be any change in the future. We touch on with the view model or the model, we just send the library on to the particular environment that is the view it will be automatically taken over. As I mentioned, from the technical term, I know that the operating change is a very uh, important interface where it will be uh, checking over the, I mean, uh, the with the difference when uh, the binding between the view and the view model. So when it comes to the Windows Store and Windows Phone app, so the initial start that is the project level and the view that remain the same as you also mentioned and the, from the portable class there is the model and the view model that remain the same. Only the platform specific functionalities that has been uh, specific onto the Windows Store app or uh, specific onto the Windows Phone app that will be changed. So the, we need to identify the um, particular functionality before we start developing our application. So with these two different uh, clients that is Windows Store app or Windows Phone app, we reference the portable class library which has the view model and the model. So basically then there will be some changes on to the particular um, the model or particular view model that automatically gets reflected onto this Windows Store, uh, Windows Store app or onto the Windows Phone app. Let's uh, quickly jump on to a small demo where I'll just showcase uh, how to start developing the uh, application for I mean, using the portable class library. Uh, I'm not going to completely go over the uh, in uh, demo because that is going to take a lot of time. I, I mean, I'll just take a small sample. I'll just, uh, in each I'll just let you know how we can uh, just create a window in mean, a portable class library. Then we can use the existing uh, Windows Phone any tab on the Windows Store app, which I have uh, We can use the PCL. And uh, I mean, we can just show, okay, I mean, we can just see how exactly the PCL is used. Let me share my screen. I think uh, I'm going to able to see my screen, right? Yes, it is. So, This is a Visual Studio 2013 preview. Um, so I'm just uh, going to create a new project. And go to C Sharp Windows. There is a template called Portable Class Library. And uh, template. So this is the thing uh, that we select the target framework. So basically we can uh, select some of the different uh, frameworks that are being available. And also for our Windows Store or a Windows Phone, we, which one will be in the right now, we will take the Windows Store app as well as the Windows Phone we can. So we will create a um, very base um, in the class library. We can see the references we have the uh, reference to the portable object. So this is the uh, uh, in, uh, the PCL class that will be which is going to use across the different uh, um, client. So, 
ดูไปความประพฤติชาวว่าตัวตนตัวนี้ทิ้งไปแต่ละสมอดีอิชูส I think you can able to see my screen right Yes we can Okay so um, so this is the um, the 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 It will input the uh, storage that will be stored and uh, will receive it on the from the UI. So basically, what um, uh, we have done here is uh, I just created uh, two uh, I mean uh, properties over there. One is the file name and the content, and uh, the I command. So I command is the one uh, which speaks between the I mean uh, it's normally used between the view model uh, that communicates with the view. This is the I command interface. So I have um, uh, taken over to I command interface. What is the command? And what uh, is the uh, the command? And this is the uh, this is the base. Uh, uh, I mean uh, the copy chain class where that will be used uh, uh, from the property level. So I have just um, created another interface. This is um, I file storage. Since we are going to Use the do wait um, application over here which is the yeah, async and the wait. We have just created a task over here on this space file async and another one is the file async. And um, I've also used uh, in uh, I've also used two methods over here on this save and another one is on load. So since so since we save the um, I mean the content over and then load the content as it is async for the load. But I mean. The topic can be taken up. I think you might know about what that thing can be done. So this is a simple um, uh, portable class that we have used, and uh, these are the two different uh, uh, in uh, the platform apps that are built for ADAP. One of them is ADAP. So both apps they are um, separate. Uh, I mean the form in the form of structure of the form of structure and everything, and also they have a separate grammar in place with. The UI completely default. So let's go to the first one. Can you speak a little louder? Is it is it fine now? Uh, yeah, a little better. Thanks. Okay. So this is the grammar in the form of structure. Okay. 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 Okay Flat library, the PCL over here. That is uh, from the project name. Uh, we can do the add of front uh, from the project name, and I add the uh, FDB storage that is the uh, uh, PCL class name. And the class file over here is the those phone eight file storage of CS file. So here I have used the I file storage interface, and I use the save file asking and the save file asking feature. So this is from the client perspective. If we uh, from the client level where we want to manipulate um, uh, the data, we can basically store it onto the isolated storage and get the value from the isolated storage. So we have this isolated storage file where we can uh, save the information and retrieve the information. In the way for those eight app, I use the same um, UI but a little different one. In the the demo, the UI is uh, completely different. Then got the Windows Phone 8, so we will use the UI for for the Windows Store app, the Windows Eight app. The UI is completely different. Yeah, so I have used the Windows Store and the PCL class that has been referenced from the public level. And yeah. 
in this i mean in this particular uh, product i just stick to the wait i have created one uh, model class which is in those app type storage of ps so when when you see the new phone it basically on the particular for the uh, to store the data and then keep the data with the window data i will the same save file as in and the local file as in but i will uh, separate uh, Go over here to save the data locally onto the local storage and retrieve the data from the local storage. The storage uh, container completely different from Windows Phone apps from Windows 8. Where we use the external storage, we use the I mean, uh, here we use the local uh, storage or the temporary storage uh, over here that is like a folder structure. So the code is completely different from these two things. So the code. Which we have written for our uh, Windows Phone and Windows Me, with using uh, PCL as a um, uh, the I mean uh, the common library that is built up for this game. These two projects. Just uh, we will just uh, do the for the for the right now the in the data is all. कार्तिक Uh, 
Well, you guys are thinking about the next question, just to keep you posted, that um, we have the next session. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, Karthik, uh, I have a question regarding the Jamarin third-party tools. I just started uh, working on the Jamarin third-party tools for the Android development. But thing is that uh, I am just facing mm -hmm. some issues during the device uh, connection, like USB connection. Mostly it is very tough to work on the device related functionalities in the Jamarin. So can you please uh, guide me in how I can go further using the Jamarin tools? Uh, no, sorry, actually, uh, can I go to follow only off of the question? Okay. I mean, can you just repeat the question? Uh, it's, uh, I am working on the for the uh, for the Jamarin tools. I mean, and yeah, I'm, okay. Yes. Uh, hello. Okay. Yes. Uh, and yeah, just go ahead with your question. Yeah, Yes, I am working on the Android development using the Jamarin tools and I have some type of features need to be you know, deployed like connection with the USB and like connection with the serial port and sending some data to the serial port like this type of operations. This type of operation is a little bit seems difficult to develop in using the Jamarin. So, but other other stuff is very very good. We can directly use the UI and we can do other things. But device related functionalities it seems difficult. Right. I mean, uh, I can understand the I mean, uh, when we target BCL, so right. when we do with the thought application. Basically, we can't uh, go with this very specific things on uh, the cost of some other things. Then we really tough. So that's why when uh, when we have the level the API and the device level the API's integration, we definitely need to go with the native app development. I mean, I'm not a Jamarin expert. Uh, I'm just uh, from my uh, perspective, I'm just telling you that. Uh, well, I mean, that's what I mean. I expect the word is API and going with native app development is the best thing. Then maybe uh, I can yeah, get into the uh, touch with the Jamarin guys. So that's can check Okay, can I have your email ID so that I can reach to you? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, I'll send it to Yeah, I think you can just use the Twitter handle to reach out to Karthik. Sure. Thanks, Aishwarya. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Um, if you have any questions, you can come off mute and ask the question directly to Karthik. Otherwise, you can even post it through question answer panel. Well, if there are no other questions, then thanks a lot, everyone, for joining the first session in Virtual Tech Conference uh, that was preparing, uh, that was creating cross-platform apps if, uh, effectively with uh, portable class libraries. Uh, for the developer track, uh, we do have the next session, uh, that is uh, Windows Azure Active Directory. And uh, people who are interested in IT Pro, uh, they can even join the uh, working with flowcharts and Microsoft Office session, which is going on parallelly on IT Pro Track. Uh, look, looking forward to have you all in the next session, and uh, thanks a lot once again for joining this session. If you have any questions, uh, you can still use the question and answer panel. I think Karthik will be available for another five to 10 minutes. Uh, he can answer your questions offline via chat. Um, otherwise, you can certainly reach out to him yeah. via Twitter or uh, sure. directly through his blog options. All right, thanks everyone. Have a nice day ahead and looking forward to see you in the next session. Thank you, Kartik. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks.